Hi there, today we're going to be reviewing the Archer TX3000E by TP-Link. This is a PCIe Wi-Fi adapter with Bluetooth 5.0 capabilities. The adapter has an Intel Wi-Fi 6 chipset capable of pushing up to 2.4 GB per second with a compatible Wi-Fi 6 modem. Personally, I don't have access to gigabit speeds. The maximum download speed I can achieve from my service provider is 300 megabytes per second. I decided to purchase a PCIe Wi-Fi adapter in hopes of achieving faster download speeds over a Wi-Fi connection. Prior to this Wi-Fi adapter, I had owned a USB Wi-Fi adapter that I picked up off Amazon for around $20. In comparison, this TP-Link Wi-Fi PCIe adapter can cost up to $50, that's just $30 more than what I paid for the USB Wi-Fi adapter. In this video, I will be unboxing the TP-Link PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. I'll show you what it took me to get this installed into my PC. Then at the end of the video, I'll show you a little comparison of the speed improvements I achieved with this Wi-Fi adapter over the USB Wi-Fi adapter I was using prior. Okay, so let's get started with the unboxing. Opening up the box, we can see everything is neatly organized and stored in its own compartment. Up first here, we have the quick installation guide. If you've never installed anything into the PCI port on your PC, this will guide you through how to plug everything in safely and make sure it works. Up next, we have the Wi-Fi antenna base. This is what you screw the antennas into and you could position them far away from your PC. They just screw right in there. And on the back, this is actually a magnetic base, so you can stick it to your metal case. Those are the cables that'll go into the PCIe adapter onto the back of your PC. Now this is the USB adapter. This I think this is used for the Bluetooth connection. You need to plug this part into a USB port on your PC's motherboard, and the other end plugs into the back of the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. Included is also this additional mounting bracket. So if your PC is built in a smaller case, this will help you position the PCIe adapter so it plugs right in. Here are the two antennas, they're individually wrapped. They do have the ability to rotate, which is, it's actually pretty sturdy, feels solid. And finally, inside this anti-static bag, we have the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter itself. The anti-static bag prevents any damage from occurring to the adapter. Also be a little bit careful while handling the component. It is a sensitive PC component. The Wi-Fi adapter does have a solid build. It's got this nice red finish, which actually works perfect with my PC. It's a solid metallic finish. Here is the end of the USB side that will plug into the back of the PCIe adapter and the other end will plug into your motherboard to enable the Bluetooth capabilities. And finally, lifting out the plastic tray underneath, we have an installation CV and another installation guide. So this installation CD actually has a purpose as it may seem crazy to include a CD in 2020. So if this is your first Wi-Fi adapter, you have no access to the internet to download the drivers. So this would be your only hope of being able to install the drivers. I actually found that when I first set up the Wi-Fi adapter, it automatically installed the drivers, which is pretty convenient. And here's a little close-up of all the parts laid out. 
This is everything that was included inside of the box. Here's a little comparison of the extra bracket that's included in the box to mount the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. So the, the pre-mounted one actually worked fine for my case, which I think is a generic NZXT case. And the other one, the spacing for the cables is the same. It'll just mount closer to your motherboard. And here's just a side-by-side -side comparison of my old Wi-Fi adapter in comparison to the new PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. The old Wi-Fi adapter would just plug into the USB 3.0 port on my PC, and it also had 5 GHz capabilities. To begin the process of installing the adapter into your PC, you want to make sure you've powered off your PC and unplugged it, just so you make sure you don't cause any damage during the installation process. Okay, so here's my PC. We're going to be installing the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter in this. So this step is kind of dependent on your PC case. I actually have to go ahead and uninstall this bracket so I can have some space to install the adapter with ease. If you're finding that you're having a hard time installing the adapter and there's just not enough space, refer to your case's manual and see if there's any brackets or any pieces that have to come off to make room for you to get the adapter installed. And if you think it's requiring too much force to push into the PCIe port, you're probably doing it wrong. You want to be careful because the motherboard is quite sensitive to force and you don't want to cause any damage. So now I'll show you how I put the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter into my PC. I just made sure I lined it up with the mounting position on the side and just applied a little bit of force and it just slipped right in. I wasn't able to film myself connecting the USB cable to the motherboard as it was a tight angle, but here's how to do it. So you want to go ahead and plug the end that goes into the PCIe adapter in first, and then locate the USB port on your motherboard and just push that in. And you want to be careful at this point that you don't unplug any other cables or, and again, apply any excess force to your motherboard. And I've also gone ahead and screwed in the PCIe adapter. As you can see, it's quite secure now. And I'll just go ahead and reinstall this bracket onto my case and put the tempered glass side panel back on. And before you move your PC back into its original location, now that you have access to the back of it, you can fasten the antenna cables onto the back of the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. I think there's also an option to plug the antennas directly into the back of your PC but I prefer to run the cables as it'll give you a better location to position the antennas. And it also prevents any damage from occurring on the back of your PC as it's quite tight back there. And here's just a view of the entire setup, the PCIe Wi-Fi card, the cables for the antenna, and the cable plugged into the USB port on the motherboard. That's all it really took. Then you want to go ahead and install the antennas into the base and it's not that complicated, you just screw it right in. So the antennas themselves have the ability to rotate up to 90 degrees and then they can also spin 360 degrees around so you can have them positioned in any direction. Another cool feature is the magnetic base. I think it mainly depends on what type of material your case is. I found that once I got it stuck on there, it was actually kind of hard to pull it off. In comparison here, I have the NZXT puck. This is like a headphone holder that mounts onto the front of the PC. And the NZXT puck just comes off with the, with minimum force, but the Wi-Fi antenna base takes a little bit of extra effort to pull off. 
So this is where I've decided to position the antennas right on top of my PC and here's the old USB Wi-Fi adapter I was using plugged into the USB port. The magnetic base really secures it to the PC so you don't have to worry about it ever slipping off. The final step before you can start using your Wi-Fi adapter is to install the correct drivers in my case, the drivers were able to install on their own because I had access to the internet. And if you don't have access and no optical drive, you can go ahead and download the drivers on another device and then put them onto a USB drive and then install them onto your PC. In the description of the video, I've included a link to the TP-Link website where you can install the correct drivers for this adapter. There's also additional information available on their website and they too have made some quick installation guide videos. Now for what you've been waiting for, is a PCIe Wi-Fi adapter really worth your money? In particular, will this TP-Link Wi-Fi PCIe adapter outperform my old USB 3.0 Wi-Fi adapter? I performed multiple speed tests on various sites to compare the USB Wi-Fi adapter to the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. And again, to remind you, from my service provider, the maximum download speeds I can achieve are 300 megabytes per second. So now sharing with you the results, with the USB Wi-Fi adapter, I averaged a download speed of around 150 megabytes per second and an upload speed of around 16 megabytes per second. And with the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter, I was able to achieve download speeds of up to 295 megabytes per second. In comparison, that's about a difference of 145 megabytes per second in download speed. And in my case, that's doubling the Wi-Fi speed I was achieving with the USB Wi-Fi adapter, which is actually quite impressive. So in conclusion, I'd recommend the PCIe Wi-Fi adapter as it only costs about $30 to $40 more than a USB Wi-Fi adapter. The only downside is you would have to install it, which you saw in this video doesn't take that much effort. Another benefit of this particular TP-Link Wi-Fi PCIe adapter is that it comes included with Bluetooth 5.0 capabilities. Most other Wi-Fi adapters are just strictly Wi-Fi adapters and don't include Bluetooth capabilities. So if you're comparing two Wi-Fi adapters, keep in mind that this adapter does have the Bluetooth capabilities. However, personally, my experience with the audio over the Bluetooth and the PCIe adapter was not the best. I own a pair of Apple AirPod Pros and the audio was very choppy and grainy and sounded really bad. So I think it really depends on what type of headphones you have. And I think it might work well with a keyboard and mouse, but I don't have experience to speak on that. But on audio with my technology, I didn't have a good experience. And finally, before making the decision to purchase this PCIe Wi-Fi adapter in hopes of improving your Wi-Fi speeds, you want to confirm the download speeds that you're paying for from your Wi-Fi service provider. So say, for example, you're paying for speeds of up to 150 megabytes per second in download speed. And with your current Wi-Fi situation, you're able to achieve that download speed comfortably then I would say this Wi-Fi adapter serves you no further purpose. These Wi-Fi speeds were logged on a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. So you also wanna keep in mind, is your Wi-Fi router capable of outputting a five gigahertz connection? And as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is a Wi-Fi 6 adapter. Wi-Fi 6 is the improvement to Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 5 would cap out at about a gigabyte in download speed over Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6 is able to push that to 2.4 gigabytes per second. But Wi-Fi 6 only works if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router and have the ability of downloading 2.4 gigabytes per second, which is actually quite uncommon. So if you don't plan to achieve speeds of over a gigabyte in download and don't want to spend the extra money, you can always look into alternatives of purchasing something that matches your download speeds and uh, matches your budget. The pros of this Wi-Fi adapter is that it's Wi-Fi 6 capable. So in a sense, you would be future-proofing your PC. 
Secondly, it does have Bluetooth 5.0 capabilities. I know most motherboards don't include Bluetooth, so this would allow you to use wireless Bluetooth headphones or controller, a keyboard, a mouse, you name it. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found this video informative and it served you any purpose, please feel free to leave a like, leave any feedback in the comments section, and if you'd like to see future content from this channel, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you, have a good day.